Hi there guys, uh, welcome back to the 12 month update. Sorry it's a little bit late, I've just been a little bit busy with work and stuff. And uh, on top of that, I've been kind of waiting for that anemone to move. As you can see, he's just been doing, well since the last video, he's done nothing but do laps around the top of the tank. He's been all over the wave maker. Thankfully I've got that cover. And then the last couple of weeks, he's just settled in there on the front, right on the front pane. And I was thinking about moving him. I thought, oh, what's the point if I move him? He's just going to move again. It could be a risky one where he goes all over the coral. So I thought, you know, I'll just leave him there. Um, but over the last month, um, it's been a busy time, to be fair, with the tank. We've done we've done quite a bit. We've, we've had a lot of growth, probably too much growth, really, which I'll go into in a minute. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been going so well. It's kind of brought us on to the, uh, onto the next uh, big thing now. So... What I'll do is I'll go into the into the tank and I'll show you each coral and, and all the fish and what's going on, explain what's happening. And uh, then I'll go into our exciting big news. So let's go in and let's just uh, let's make a start. So first off, I'll start with the torch. If you look at the last video compared to this video, it is huge. It, it's growth has been insane. The other day, um, I noticed that one of the tentacles had come out and it was actually latched on to the pink goniopora. To be fair, it's been, a, it's been a bit annoyed since then, that pink goniopora, but it's not dead, it's all right. It's just been a little bit annoyed. Um, so I've got a turkey base. We managed to um, just just blow the head off the goniopora and it seems to have worked. It definitely came back out. It was right in that bottom right-hand corner where it was struggling. Um, but on doing that, obviously, because I blew the torch, all the heads went in. And um, I noticed that actually on the front of it, there was another large head that had grown um, coming out of the front of it. I was quite surprised actually that I hadn't noticed it before. It's just it's just so big that um, you, it just looks like a big ball of tentacles. But it's, it's just gone that well that I'm starting to get a little bit worried now because down here I've obviously got the candy canes. And on the last video, I, I said obviously that head on the left was starting to split. Now it's completely split. So what I don't want it to do is to latch on maybe during the day while I'm, if I'm out or, or whatever, or during the night if it latches on and starts to sting that, obviously all that time that it's took to split and grow um, will be a little bit wasted. Um, on top of that, obviously I've got the, the green plate. To be fair, this, uh, this camera doesn't really do it much justice. Um, for the next video, I'm going to um, really play about with the settings on the lights and stuff to, to try and show you the the best colour spectrum of, of what the colours of, of the coral are actually showing. Um, because that, that green plate in Monty is bright, bright green and under this light it just looks like a greeny white, doesn't it? Um, but obviously again, that if you look at the growth from that, that from the last video to this one, it's growing out so far that that and the green goniopora is starting to collide a little bit now. And again, I'm a little bit worried that we're going to have a bit of coral warfare and things are going to start start stinging each other. I don't obviously don't want things dying. Obviously, the green goniopora it's massive. It's all in between the bigger heads. You'll see, just see there, there's loads of small heads sprouting out from inside. The small heads all sprouting out from underneath. It's just huge. And all I can put that down to is uh, stable parameters. It's been rock stable, alkalinity is 9.3, calcium's 450, magnesium, magnesium's 1350, uh, phosphate's 0 0.03, nitrate is 5. And it, it's just constantly rock stable through water changes, dosing, and um, no pox, to be honest. I, I literally dose... dose all of those every day and yeah as you can see it's just a rock stable tank and everything's growing really well if i go around the side you can actually see these mushrooms the one in the back is starting to split again but as you can see where the goniopora is touching it it is starting to sting the edge of it so i do need to i do need to look at that quite quickly um again on the growth side of things the bubble coral down here if you notice from the last video, if you look how close it is to the glass now, excuse the uh, the marks on the glass by the way, I've, I've, 
I was going to do a, a big um, water change and clean up today. But um, with the plans and stuff, it, I'm just going to have to do it over the weekend. I just thought I'd get a quick update in because over the weekend I've got some big stuff going on. But as you can see, I've, I've seen when the sweeper tentacles come out at night, they're actually pretty much touching the glass. Even that's that's growing. Uh, the red pink lobo to me that looks very similar to what it did before um loads of color though loads of color it's doing really well when i feed it all the sweeper tentacles come out that's doing great um and basically what i feed this feed the coral and feed the tank is every day there's three mil of the red sea reef energy a and b that goes in um that's half an hour before the lights go out roughly around 7 30 at night uh, I'm also dosing the um, Coral Colours program, the ABCD, 0.6 mil of each element goes in around the same time, in, but that strength to sump into the return section. Um, and then at night, just before I go to bed, um, I literally dose 2 mil of Nopox at the moment, just because I know it's starting to creep back up, um, but I'll, it's pretty much at 5. Uh, the hammer in the back that's just that's just going from strength to strength it's just constantly splitting heads it's huge now you can't you probably can't tell because it's against the rock there but there's loads of new heads growing on that thing that's done really well considering it lost two heads when i had the uh, the wave maker problem that's doing great green style of fora again you can't really tell on this camera and it does the does the coral no justice whatsoever but it that is pretty much a fluorescent green that green stylo, um, that is going, it's just growing so well, all growing out, I'll show you from the side. It's just really, really start, starting to sprout out, it's doing great. The purple stylo, again, if you look at the last video, if you look at the two heads on the top, they're, they're literally branching out so well now, whereas on the last video, they were just starting to branch out. That one there is starting to collide with one of the other ones. I love that coral, that's, that's one of my favourite corals in the tank that is. Came off a really good guy um, who was literally trimming down, it, well, his uh, colony was around two, two, about two feet by three feet so he was splitting it all down, fragging it all down and that's come off that and it's just done so well. But it came from healthy coral in the first place so that's going great. The, green, the lime berry hysterix in the back, um, I don't know if you remember, but I'd got it over here by the uh, green barley slimer. Uh, came down one morning, one of the big turbo snails had knocked it off and it was in, it was in the sand. So I, I took it off the sand, gave it a good um, swirl off and I had to re put it down onto the rock. But on doing that, I realised just how big it's actually grown. If you look at the previous videos, I mean, look at all the white tips on it. It's doing really well. Really branching out, doing great. Uh, again, pink hysterix in the middle. Again, the colour's not really doing it that much good, but if you look at all the white tips on the end of it, compared to the last video, the growth is just insane. It's... And again, all I can put it down to is really, really rock-stable parameters. Uh, that there, the green barley slimer there, I'll be honest, that's, I think that's on its way out. Uh, that bicolor blenny just will not leave it alone. And if you look underneath, you can just about see it's got like white STN, RTN um, patches. It's really stripping back. Uh, the only reason I've left it there is because while that's there, the blenny's not actually touching that one. Not really anyway. So I think I am actually going to lose that, unfortunately. And it's a shame because I really like that coral, but unfortunately, that's that's a fish that just it, he just won't leave it alone. He's constantly pecking at it. The the polyps constantly, they'll they'll be out for half an hour. He'll have a peck at it, and that's them in for the rest of the day. Uh, which is a shame, but I'm hoping um, on the next uh, on the next video. Um, I'll I'll have a little bit more news for you, more exciting news for you that can, uh, it'll, it'll mean that I can just keep a lot more SPS. The Duncan Coral down here, again, so many heads on that, it's just unreal. I've actually lost count how many heads are on it on the last video. The starfish had touched it and it had gone in, but 
as you can see, it just goes from strength to strength, that thing. And I literally feed, I feed it brine shrimp when I feed the fish. Uh, loves that, I just put a little bit on each head and it all goes in and that's going, going great. And then in the back, obviously we've got the GSP, which is, which is going, well, that's going really well. On the other side, it's starting to grow onto the glass. Um, but I've got the purple plate and the green plate. They are growing. They're not really merging, but they are growing. There's the blenny that keeps pecking away at that green barley slimer. If anybody gets one of them, uh, just be careful with them with SPS. Um, as for the fish, probably not going to be able to see many of them now because they, they don't really like the camera, but Melanaris Ras is growing a bit, actually, to be fair to him. I was wondering why um, I kept getting loads of little random stones like that one there. Um, believe it or not, where's it gone? There's another one around the side somewhere. Uh, I started noticing random stones just appearing on the sand. I couldn't work out it, what it was. I thought it was just the, the snails and stuff moving stuff about. Uh, but it wasn't. It was him. Um, I caught him playing with a stone and he'd literally just pick it up, have a swim around and spit it out. And then he'd go back down, pick it up, swim around, spit it out. So yeah, so he's just playing with a, with a stone. Uh, got quite a bit of character he has, to be fair. The yellow wrasse in the back, again, loads of character. I've noticed a, like a white patch on his side. I, th I think he's either brushed himself against the rock or maybe the anemone, I'm not too sure. But he's grown as well. Cracking fish is really like that fish. Adds loads of colour, loads of movement. And on top of that, he takes out any pests. To be honest, I've never seen any pests in this system. I obviously dip all my coral, but... Just in case he's there to do a job. Uh, peacock Rass, again, he's grown a little bit. And um, again, he's there for as a bit of a pest control fish. But again, to add colour, he's doing great. Female Clown, to be honest, she gets bigger every time I, I look at her. She, she's, if you look at the size of her compared to the other one, I can't even see the other one. Um, she, she's been doing great. And between the two of them... Um, just there, I mean, obviously I've got the, the green bubble tip and enemy there, but just to the right of that, I've been catching them cleaning the glass, the back glass. So whether they're trying to think about laying eggs or what, I don't know. Fingers crossed we might have a few babies or something. I mean, chances are all the clean-up crew and things like that that are in there, they probably won't last long, bless them. But it'd be nice to maybe one day get into a bit of clownfish breeding. It's, it's apparently quite hard and difficult, but I'd like to give it a go. I like a challenge. Um, what else we got? Oh, there's the, there's the male clan. I'll probably show you how tiny he is compared to her, to be fair. He's tiny. Absolutely tiny compared to her. She's she's the beast. Bit of the boss of the tank, to be fair to her. Sorry, it's quite hard with the anemone there. Um, yeah, so that's probably it livestock-wise. Um, let's just quickly go into the sump, and then I'll start to explain um, the plans of what's going on moving forward. Oh, the batteries are going on the lights. Um, but to be honest, on the right hand side, I've got rid of the ATO, the reefer ATO. Um, again, I'll explain why shortly. Uh, but the plan was to put a custom manifold in on the right hand side and um, have a couple of reactors running. So one maybe with some C some of the CCAM bio matrix uh, and then one maybe for row of phos if my uh, phosphate starts to creep up. Um, but again, since then, I have had some new plans at the minute. The skimmer's off, by the way, because I've just put brand new floss in, and if you leave the skimmer on, it'll literally all overflow, so that's why that's off. Um, but I'll, I'll go into the new plans now, so you can kind of see why I've kind of stopped updating the inside of this sump, and what what the plan is moving forward so we just close that and i'll go into these plans there you go that is the red sea reefer 425 xl deluxe that is the plan now moving forwards uh the reason i've decided to do it and, and the reason i decided to pull the trigger was because I was on one of the fish groups and up popped a used uh, second hand uh, reefer 425XL. Uh, it came with all the kit, 
Um, the guy wanted, I think he wanted a thousand pound for it. And I was really, really thinking, you know what, this could be it. This could be great. It's got all the kit with it as well. Granted, a lot of the kit I'll probably end up cleaning up and selling on because it's not kit that I'm used to. It's not kit that I really want. But I thought, yeah, this could be the one. Anyway, I looked into it a bit further. Spoke to the bloke. Really, really nice bloke. Really good bloke. Um, quite far down south, though. That was the only problem. So I looked into hiring a van. And van prices were just ridiculous. To the point where the price of the van along with the tank and all the goods, bearing in mind it's a second-hand tank as well, actually came to roughly the same price as a brand new Red Sea Reefer 425XL. And I thought, well, you know, if I'm spending that much on that, I may as well just have a brand new one and not have the hassle of having to go down all the way down south. It was an eight-hour drive in total, four hours there, four hours back. I'd have had to, obviously had all the cleaning up to do, all the sorting out to do. I'd have had to get it in as well. It would have just been a nightmare compared to just buying a brand new one, starting afresh, and getting it delivered to my door. So I thought about it, and that planted the seed a little bit, along with, obviously, all the corals growing that much that they're starting to collide and, and sting each other. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go for it, and I'm just going to get one. So I got, got quite a few prices in and stuff, got a few, um, a few quotes in and stuff. And I ended up, in the end, after looking at the lights and things like that, I thought, you know what, I might as well just go with a deluxe. I'm going to have to buy the new lights anyway. I like the brackets that come with the deluxe. So that's why I did it. So, yeah, so we've got the Red Sea Reefer 425XL Deluxe. Um, obviously, it's I've, I've built it just to make sure that there's no issues uh, with the tank or, or anything like that. Um, but it's obviously it's not wet yet because I'm still stocking stocking up with all the kit, um, which I'll cover in the next video. A lot of it I'm actually picking up over the weekend. Um, it's all ordered. It's coming in tomorrow and Saturday, so I'll be picking that up over the weekend. But with this tank, I've decided while it's dry, I'm literally just going to try and make this tank as good as I possibly can. Not just in terms of the the display and the, the rock and the coral and the fish and things like that. But also the sump. I've I've seen online um, a guy that that really pimped out his uh, his reefer sump, and I thought you know what that's cracking. There's no way I could really do it while it's wet. So I thought you know what while it's dry, I'm not I'm in no rush to set this apart from the coral, all growing and and starting to hit each other. I'm not really in any rush, but it means that I'm really gonna be able to pimp this sump out. So I'm going with, um, I'm, I'm going to plumb it myself. I'm obviously going to use the majority of the Red Sea plumbing, but I'm going to put my own gate valve into this sump. The only reason I'm doing that is because I've decided I'm going to do away with the filter socks as well. So the filter socks are coming out, the filter sock section's coming out. It's, it's quite a big project, to be honest. I'm going to hard plumb in a Clarisy, uh Automatic 3000. I'm going to hard plumb that in. I thought if I'm hard plumbing that in, I may as well um, put my own gate valve in and do away with the red sea valve. The red sea valve is okay, but to be honest with you, a year on, I'm still having to fiddle and play around with mine. And I've got to a stage now where I've stopped fiddling. I just, just let it trickle down the overflow a little bit. I've just got used to the noise. Um, I've known me with it. Get it perfect. And then within a few hours, it's back to overflowing again or it's gone too low so rather than fiddle around and stuff i'm just going to hard plumb in a new line a gate valve and that will be then be hard plumbed into the clarity which is going to be roughly where the filter sock section is and um, the other reason i decided to go with a brand new one is the guy that was selling it had the v2 sump so obviously it goes in from the right flows across to the left and then back up through the return pump on the left hand side the v3 sump which is this one the brand new one means comes in through the socks goes into the left chamber that's where i'm thinking about putting my skimmer and then they provide you with a baffle to go in the middle so you can have a refugium section in the back which i, I wanted in i wanted a refugium so i could start growing pods and stuff but because it's so big i should realistically be able to get a decent enough size refugium in to start looking at the nitrates and phosphates in the tank and maybe go a little bit more natural and then on the right hand side, um, the return section, yeah, I'm, that's where it's going to have the, uh, 
the brand new return pump, which is a JBO DC uh, 6500. Uh, on top of that, because I was looking at building the manifold for the last tank, I built it anyway, to be honest, because I thought I'm going to use it in this one. So if you just look down there, that is the, the custom manifold that I've built to go into the sump. And obviously, as you can see, it's like a luminous green and grey. To be fair, it's looking a bit too luminous, mainly because the, the blue light's on it. But yeah, I'm, I'm going with a green and grey um, theme within the sump so the manifold's going to be green and grey the gate valve's going to be green and grey the, the plumbing's going to have a, a green um, wrap to it um, on the right hand side so yeah and then on the right obviously on the right hand side this is something I'm really not used to is uh, is a cabinet so in there I'm going to build a custom unit to house the doser the, uh, the dosing containers all the plugs, all the wires, everything's going to be hidden away within a custom unit. So the idea with this tank is not just to uh, obviously upgrade and it means I'm going to be able to get nice big fish. Uh, I'm going to go for a few tanks and things. I'm also going mainly SPS dominant. And the main thing about having the small tank was literally to learn as much as I could. I had the mixed reef so that I could learn what corals I like the most. I am, I am obviously going to move everything into this one, but it's going to be, I'm going to aim it to be an SPS dominant tank, fingers crossed, if all goes well. And um, yeah, and on top of that, obviously, because it's a long term project, I'm going to make the sump hopefully just as nice as the main display. So with that all in mind, I thought I may as well do a full build series on this tank. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So this is the first kind of little bit of a glimpse into the 425 XL. I've not put the doors on yet just because I don't want to get them damaged while I'm doing so much DIY work within the tank. Um, but yeah, so the next video will literally show um, the first stage of the, the DIY that's going on inside. So if you want to see more and you want to see obviously the 425 XL deluxe build, um, subscribe to the video, like the video, let us know. If you want to see anything in particular in the comments below and in the next video i'll try and answer your questions about where we're going with this and um, how to do the bits and bobs that we're doing so thanks for watching guys sorry it's it's a little bit late and sorry the video's dragged on a little bit i've just tried to get everything in one hit so that the next video will start to show the transfer over between the 170 and into the 425 so cheers guys and um thanks again bye bye